Howdy folks, and in this episode of the Smoogleville Workshop, I'm going to show you how to make this very simple center finding tool. So I'm going to show you how to make a center finder. A very simple device that you, we use to find the middle of a piece of standard stock. And this is my inch and a half center finder for inch and a half stock. And the, 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 really the trick with these is you've got a little pin there in the middle and that is exactly equidistant between these two points here. So I'm going to make a device like that for a different size. This is for my inch and a half. And the purpose of that is it allows us to find the exact center of a piece of wood. Let me move these things out of the way and I'll show you. Um, by just placing this device and then turning it slightly one way or the other like that until the, until the pins are touching each side and then we can push down on that. And so if I do that, and push down actually it's soft wood so I've been able to actually push that right in and there I've got a nice accurate mark for the the center of that wood you can see that there in the middle and I haven't had to mess around measuring it figuring out where the middle is the tool just does it for me so that's your center finder and that's what we're using these for and I'm going to make several sizes for all the standard wood sizes I've got one here for the for the inch and a half standard stock and I've got one here that I can use for a a three and a half inch standard stock and the reason I make different sizes is because if I try and use one that's too big for the stock I'm trying to put a center hole in it's difficult to get near the end like this one here if I try and put a center mark in this and I've only got this one here I've got to turn it by quite an extreme angle there before I'm touching the sides and the nearest it's going to mark is you know several a couple of inches back from the end there uh, oh yes it's in the middle but it's too far back so it's nice to have different sizes to make sure that I can mark the center of various stock sizes so our standard stock sizes are inch and a half two and a half three and a half four and a half and then it usually jumps to six and a half right so uh, which is a, would be a seven size and an eight and so on so that's what we're trying to do here today is make center finders to find each one of those so I need a three inch I need a two and a half inch center finder for my two and a half inch bits. And so, as I said, we're trying to make sure that we, f we are equidistant. The pin is equidistant from the two, the two dowels that we're going to put in there. So it's a very, very simple tool. And I just run a screw through there to grip that pin so that when I'm pushing on it, the pin doesn't pop up. All right, you can super glue them as well, but I like to have that so I can, if this gets bent or gets worn out, then I can pull that pin out and change it just by loosening that screw. So the parts you'll need for this are I've got a piece of walnut here but that could be any hardwood really. Oak, ash, any anything that's fairly stable and doesn't isn't going to shift around. I wouldn't use pine really. Maybe radiata that's fairly stable but really I'd go with more of the hard traditional hardwoods. And so there's a, I'm going to use some walnut for this. All right, two, let's see, that's about a, an inch and an eighth by an inch and an eighth. Perfect uh, for, for this job. And I can get several of these center finders out of that. Right. You'll also need a 564 drill bit right there. And that will drill a, a hole for our pin. That's a 564 is a pretty good match to a three penny nail that we've got there. Then to match our dowel, I'm going to use this this Falsner bit here. That's a 3 8 Falsner bit. And that's actually a fruit one. I bought a quite a nice quality one because I've got some cheaper ones here. And they cut a nice hole, but it's not very accurate. This actually cuts a really accurate 3 8 hole. I found the cheaper ones tend to overcut. And so, so the dowel I'm trying to push into the hole tends to be a bit, bit loose. And you don't want that moving around because we want precision, right? We want a fairly accurate center hole. So the most important tool, of course, is a pair of dividers. And this is going to help us actually find the exact center between two points. So we'll set these dividers up and then mark our piece of walnut for a center piece. And you may need, it depends how you're going to do things, but you may need yourself a little, little set square as well. I would recommend doing this on a drill press. That'll give you a more accurate 
cut in the hole. If you don't, then you just have to be really accurate with your hand hand drills, okay? Uh, and try and figure out a way of getting those through very, very straight. But I would go with a, a drill press if you can, because that will always put a nice, accurate, straight hole right through, no deviation. All right, so I'm gonna show you how to mark this out now, and then I'm gonna jump on the drill press and get the holes drilled. So the first thing I did was use one of my other center finders to find the center of this piece of walnut that I was going to use to make the next center finder. So I mark that, get the center, using that center finder. Okay, there it is. And now the next step was to set the marking gauge to that center point and run a line down the piece of walnut so I knew the center of the of the walnut stock there and having done that now I can use the dividers and I can set them into that groove that I've made using the marking gauge push that down to get a, a starting point there about half an inch in from the end tuck that back in there now push that over to the middle there and that gives me my pin point there where I'll put the actual hole for the three penny nail and then I'll flip that over and again putting that into the same center slot so I can be sure that these things are all aligned correctly and push down on that again and there I've got my three points and they're accurately marked out ready for cutting Okay, so we've got our hole cut. Now the next operation depends on how you want to do this next part. I'm actually going to run a screw through the side of this to help catch the pin, all right? Because what will happen is when we're pressing down on it, that's, that pin's kind of loose in there. So we can either uh, super glue that in there and you can see it's not quite sticking out yet. I've got to put, put a bit more, bash that in to get that to stick up on that side. And then I can run a screw through the side to hold that in there. I think I might do it that way because that way I can actually replace that if needs be. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna mark using this square here. And let's get a sharper pencil. In fact, let's get a, let's get a marking knife on that. If you want an accurate line, use a marking knife. Pencils, I don't know, they just, they never seem to be as accurate to me. And I just need to, a tiny little nick on that corner there. So I know where to bring this round to, and then I'm going to make a tiny little mark right in the middle there. So I can, I'm going to drop a, another screw into that, and then I'm going to, uh, another hole into that. So I can run a screw into it, and I can have the screw meet that nut inside. All right, that's probably not the screw I'll use, that's a bit short. Then I'll run a screw through. So let's drill a pilot hole in there as well and again I'm going to do it on the drill press so that that meets the the hole on the other side right so let's drill a small hole through to meet the other the other hole like that and what I'm actually going to do I'm going to drill I'm going to use this 3 8 to put a little relief hole in there so that my screw can go in far enough to meet the the pin that's going through that so <laughs> that little thing put this up like that
Okay, so I've cut a little relieving hole there, and this is gonna, I wanna screw this one in right now. Okay, and that should go through the pilot hole, and that'll hold my, that'll hold my pin in place. I'm not gonna put that in just yet, and I'm just make sure it's gonna, yep, that's entering the, let's pull that back a little bit. The next trick of this is to actually get these little pins in place. So I'm gonna, this is where my dowels go in, and they need to be precise. That's why I needed a good, a good false a bit that matches the size of the dowel I'm gonna use very closely. So I'm gonna cut a couple of these dowels off, put them in, let's get them gluing, and then I'll use the sander to uh, polish those off and get those nice and neat so that we get this nice sort of, this nice uh, effect here where the two different contrasting woods come uh, come together and we, we'll sand those and, and uh, get that really nice and flat so we end up with a, an attractive looking center finder. Okay, so let's go cut my 3 8 dowel into a couple of pieces that will be perfect for that. And that's, uh, we're going to want a couple of about, I don't leave too much sticking over, but less than three quarters of an inch usually. All right. Okay, so let's glue some dowels into position. On there, like that. Isn't Don't want to get too much on there. Just a, a good spreading like that. Okay, that should do it. And then I'm going to gently twist that into the hole like this. So it just comes through like that. And you can line the grain up if you want, depends how particular you are about that. And let me do this other side as well. And that's kind of a grubby end, so I'll put that inside there. Oh, that's kind of a, a bit too much glue probably. You don't need much, I've probably gone and put too much on here. But I'll try and clean that off, that's okay. Let's uh, run that through there. And again, let's... Uh, I spin them to get them in there so it drags the glue in with it. You know? Get a good spread of glue in there like that. Alright, I'll give that a few moments. For the glue to set up, and let's get a Run a pin through there like that. And uh, let's push that through. Just to get that to, to seat like that. There we go. Because we only want a little bit sticking out, but that's enough to, to make a mark to find a centre on um, pretty much anything and then we tighten up this okay that's working we tighten up this screw here make sure that we can so i can replace that little three penny nail if i need to but uh you know having that there means I, that's gripping it nicely so it tends not to pop up i've super glued a few of those in but it occurred to me that it'd be nice to be able to take that out and replace it if it wears so having a screw in there and not gluing it in seemed like a good idea. All right, we'll give that a few more minutes to dry and then I'm gonna sand off these tops to get them flush. And then we can put a little tongue oil on there and we have ourselves a little two and a half inch sander finder, just like that. Very simple. Great use of small scraps of wood. I'm always looking for ways to use that for tools. Okay, so now we need to, let's just take the burrs off these little items here, like that, the little markers so they stay accurate. And have a burr putting it out, all right. And the next part's up to you how you do it. You could plane these off or just sand them. If you've got a sander, uh, you can just use some sandpaper and just get on the top of that like that. And, sand those down by hand 
Let's see, let's see how long that takes. If you got some fairly new sandpaper. Yeah, that's not bad actually. I love this part. There we go. Break the edges there, like that, and that, folks. In just in a few minutes, I've made a nice little center finder, and I'm going to keep making these so I've got all the different sizes represented. You know, this is my inch and a half. Now I've got a two and a half. There's my three and a half, and I'll make a bigger four and a half. I've still got enough walnut for that, so I'll make a bigger one, and so I can choose those to mark all the different sizes of wood. There, there's a two and a half. I can uh, mark, find the center of that, so just place that over without pushing down on it. Twist it, and look out, it's not too much of an angle, so I can get that quite near the end. So if I needed to make a hole in the middle of this, I could do that, and bring that up to the end there, and then just wiggle it on, like that. Just wiggle it down. That go there, and there's my center point right there. You see that there, right in the middle? Here's my center point right there. And the last thing I'm going to do is uh, add to its longevity a bit by uh, just putting a little antique oil on it just to uh, get some kind of a protection on coat on there like that So, there you have it folks, very simple to make, little center finders of all different sizes there, and I was just able to make that for almost no cost out of some off cuts of wood. You could, I used walnut, but you could use oak or ash or any other hardwoods you might have lying around in your workshop, and a little bit of dowel there, a little bit of three quarter dowel, but you could use pretty much any size, half inch dowel to do it just as well, I'm sure. And uh, so there you go folks your own way to make a simple center finding tool until next time we'll see you again at the smoogleville workshop please click the like button if you found this episode helpful and we'd love to have you as a subscriber as there's always something interesting going on in the smoogleville workshop mm -hmm.